uh, other than like this is for the emerging markets where information would be a constraint but for the developing or uh, for the developed economies let's say within europe if you're comparing a company or uh, say in germany or in france so uh, is it like broadly there are the parameters the weightages you will put on that that remains uh, more like like uh, more or less same or are there any key differences which you would have noticed in last 10 years i'd say that it doesn't vary a whole lot there you know it's it's look i think in europe i think our biggest challenge is often language barriers um <laughs> that you know you you um look half the time we get documents I, I wish i could say that everybody gave us things that are very easy to digest but every client will give us things in a different form in a different format and you know if, if i get a pdf in german it's difficult to work with you know if they send me a word document in german i can put it in google translate and i can read it um in a minute um those tend to be you know bigger issues um i think we also would say you know are there difference in accounting rules so is it under ifrs is it under us gap is it under um you know dutch gap you know dutch gap is very different you know and, and what adjustments do you need to make um to the financial statements to put it on a basis that's something that you're comfortable with and that you're typically used to pricing a company on um and if you don't know dutch gap you got to learn <laughs> so is that helpful thanks okay sure Okay, oop, yeah. one more. How many times are wrong and how many times are right? <laughs> I'm never wrong. Ask my wife. Actually, no, she would say the opposite. I'm always wrong. Um, <laughs> Happily, I think we're, we're, given that our client retention rate is close to 100%, I guess I'd like to think that that means our clients think we're right more often than we're not. <laughs> That's okay with me. That means I'm not charging enough, though. <laughs> yeah. You can. Um, that doesn't fly very often. I mean, look, the, the reality is, is that in our world, um, so right now there's not a regulatory body overseeing the valuation profession. Um, so it is not um, like the CFA. Or not sorry, uh, the CPA or um, the CA um, here for accountants, that it, it is largely unregulated. There is in the U.S. Um, right now discussion coming out of, I think out of Congress, that's basically saying that has to change. And so the industry is doing work itself to say, okay, what do we think is the right way for us to regulate ourselves? What are the certifications that we think are relevant? What's the training that we want people that are in this profession to have? Um, and how will that work? Um, interestingly, for this organization, um, this, you know, the CFA group was approached to would you be interested in participating in this discussion um, and, and potentially having the CFA be one of the ruling um, bodies um, or ruling designations for um, independent valuation firms? And they said no. <laughs> and it's and look, it's going to be, you know, look, there's clearly a lot more financial analysts in the world um, probably than there are valuation people. You know, my parents know what a, you know, analyst on Wall Street is, they have no idea what I do. They think I'm an auditor because um, I used to work at a big four firm. And so, uh, okay, fine. You know, that's what I do. Um, so I don't think that, the, you know, I don't think that valuation people stopping getting CFAs because essentially, look, if, if it's not going to be supported by whatever regulatory body ultimately says what is because the Institute said we don't want to be part of it, they're not going to be part of it. So by default, that means all the valuation people who are currently going to studying their butts off for the test next week are not going to finish. <laughs> you know, they're, whatever level they're on next year, the firm's going to say, guess what? You now have to get whatever, this designation. 
um, and we'll pay for that, but we won't pay for the CFA, and they have to pay for themselves. So some numbers are going to self-select out because they're going to say, I, I'm doing this for work, and if work's not paying for it, I'm not going to do it. Um, so it will change, um, and it will change in the next couple of years um, that you'll start to see that there are going to have to be designations, at least in the United States. My guess is that that, you know, look, the big four are clearly a dominant force in the valuation profession. They're all in the U.S. My guess is that they will push whatever they're doing in the U.S. globally, as Duff and Phelps will. We will push it globally. So you'll see that even if there are not regulations in Europe or, or different countries in Asia um, to regulate the education and certification and valuation professionals, whatever happens in the U.S., because the big, the biggest five firms in this space are global and largely have their biggest practices in the U.S., they'll just push it out, which, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, we, Rune and I had a meeting today where, you know, we said, look, we, we've noticed, you know, it, for funds in India that a lot of fund documents state that for valuation you have to use a big four firm. And we were meeting with an attorney and we said, what's up with that? You know, we're not a big four firm, but we're better than they are. What's up with that? And they said, it's what the old document said. And we just used it for the next one. And so, you know, while we weren't necessarily in this space 10 years ago, they were creating fund documents, LP agreements 10 years ago, and all they had were the big four or whatever, you know, whatever many there were. So it went from the big eight to, what, you know, just down, down, down to four. And they just used the last version. And they said, that's a great point we're going to change it going forward that we're going to call it just general valuation agents. They just didn't know. Um, they didn't think about it. You know, it's their attorneys. It's not really part of their day-to-day -day job to be focused on it. And so when it was brought to their attention, so, okay, now we know we've got to go talk to a lot of lawyers and just say, what's up with this? And get them each to tell their own firm as you write the new documents to, you know, scratch out big four and put in Duff and Phelps. Um, or maybe they'll just be more generic and say an external valuation agent um, or qualified external valuation agent. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens and, and, and how that evolves, but it will change. Um, it has been unregulated. Um, you know, but I think the big firms largely have all tried very hard to encourage their employees and or require their employees to do something, be it the CFA or other regional um, certifications for appraisers to have a level of standards. So it'll be higher and it'll be more consistent, um, but to be determined, okay? Thank you all for coming and paying attention and your participation, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Chris. I'll just uh, invite uh, Sonia now for the vote of thanks. Well, Chris, as uh, Jitu mentioned at the beginning of the session, a lot of us in this room know very little about what goes on in the unlisted space. So thank you so much for this enlightening talk. I think we all have a better understanding now. May I invite Jayesh Gandhi, President IIP, to give a small token of thanks. And I just want to take two minutes of your time for some important things that are happening. Um, as a lot of you all you know that this is, our, uh, this is a very important year for us at IIP. It's our 10th year anniversary. And these have been 10 glorious years. A lot of my senior colleagues sitting here in the front two rows, they have been involved with IIP from the very beginning. And what you see today of IIP is really the time, effort, energy they have put in, and they have evolved it into what it is. So I think they deserve a big round of applause. Which brings me to the point that our uh, memberships for CFA Institute and IIP for year 2015-16 are up for renewal. You must have seen some sweet, gentle reminders from us. And uh, in fact, we reached out to a lot of our members across the country this year to really find out what value they see in the charter, why do they renew their memberships year after year. And we got interesting responses to stay abreast with what's happening in the financial industry, to upgrade their skill set by these knowledgeable sessions like we had today, the conferences and a lot of other stuff that we keep doing throughout the year, uh, fabulous networking opportunities, and many other reasons. But I think underlying all these, there was one important sentiment that came through very clearly, is the pride and the honor they feel at being a part of this community of investment prof professionals. 
which are relentlessly promoting ethical conduct in the investment industry over the years. And it, it resonated so well with us volunteers here because we all feel so privileged to be a part of this community. So please, may I request all of you to renew your memberships as soon as possible. I did mine last week. It took less than a minute. So please do it. It won't take much of your time. This year, there is also a lot of focus from the Institute and the Society in uh, women in the investment industry, about empowering women in the investment industry. In fact, the inaugural, uh, inaugural conference on women in investment industry is being held in US. And two very interesting sessions from that are being live webcast for our members. They will also be recorded, so you can see it at your ease later. Uh, one session is tomorrow, one is day after, so please take advantage of this opportunity. Well, thank you, Chris, once again for being here and uh, giving us such an interesting talk. Thank you to all of you for coming here, taking out time from your busy schedules, as always to NSE for lending us their premises, and to all my fellow volunteers who keep raising the bar with every event that we organize. Thank you.